Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to try to copy a Madewell shirt. Okay, so it is a beautiful day today in Sichez. We are enjoying the sunshine from the comfort of our own patio. And I decided that I wanted to do another challenge to myself to see if I could copy or be inspired by um, a ready to wear outfit, garment. So I wanted to show you first that I made these little shorts and these are the Pietra shorts by Closet Case Patterns. I got this in their recent sale, this pattern. I've been looking at them for a while. They have these really cute um, pockets. They have an elastic back. This I made as a wearable muslin using some striped linen that I got last fall at Ribe Saint Casals, which is a sort of chain fabric store here in Spain. I did a decent job with the stripes running through the pockets. Pockets move, so they're not going to be, um, you know, they're not so static that it's not going to change at some point, but I think overall pretty good. I love the big thick facing on these. It makes you feel really pulled in and, um, you know, like it's just a really nice feeling. It hits me right at the belly button. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, let's see if I have them, I'll put in some pictures of me wearing them. I haven't actually taken any yet, but maybe this is a good inspiration to do that. Um, so I made a size 12, no, I made a size 10. So I was going to grade from the 12 to the, at the waist down to a 10 at the hips based on my hip measurement. So my hip measurement is a 37 or 38 currently, 37, 38-ish. Anyway, 10 was the size they said, and I was going to do a 12 down to a 10, and then I thought, well, with the elastic waistband, it probably won't matter. And actually, I probably could go down to an eight. Um, I have gained a couple pounds in quarantine, uh, which I don't begrudge myself, but you know, after when I, once I can walk around again and get my daily steps in, I don't expect to kind of be, um, this exact size. So yeah, so maybe these will need to come in a little bit. It's not going to be easy. I might add bell loops or something. Anyway, I wanted to make something to go with these because I do have a fair bit more of this fabric and I thought if I made a little top to go with, it would look kind of like a faux jumpsuit, right? Which is always a cute look. So I was on Madewell this morning because I do like Madewell a lot and I saw this cute little top and I'll put more pictures in, but I'm gonna look at it so I can dissect it. So when I saw this, um, I thought it was very cute. I don't tend to wear a lot of ruffles, but I thought it was sweet and, and just kind of prim enough without being kind of cutesy. You know, like I sometimes feel if something is too cutesy, it feels too young um, and just doesn't feel like me. So when I look at this, I see a fairly straightforward V-neck blouse. Clearly there are princess seams where they're putting in and that all go all the way up to the shoulder where there are ruffles. And then there's a short sleeve with a um, small band at the bottom. I can see that they're just using bias binding for the neckline, there's no facing and there's no back closure. Okay, so once I decided that this is the one I was gonna do, and this is for my friend Dallas, so Dallas, if you're watching, Dallas, I had chosen, I had a couple of ideas and I put them on Instagram and Dallas was the first one slash only one <laughs> to respond <laughs> quick enough, quick enough for me to make a decision and get going. And uh, and so I'm making this for Dow. So I have this issue of Patrones and um, I'm gonna do another video on this, but if you do wanna try this magazine, and so many of you have said to me that you wanna try this, they have an app and this uh, month they've started a free issue of the one of the magazines. I think it's two issues back or something like that. So it's Revista Patrones, but if you go to the app store and you just put in Patrones, it will come up and then you download it and you can actually download any of these patterns and you can get a subscription. So this one is from my local library and I came upon this. And I thought, well, that's similar. That's got a similar feel to it. And I'll show you the line drawing. So there's the line drawing there. So a couple of differences. Number one, this has a back closure, though I, I would admit it doesn't have a V-neck, so I have to add that. The, oops, let me, there we go. 
the ruffles go too far down. I notice on the on the one that I'm looking at, they pretty much end here. So I need to adjust the ruffles. And of course it's long sleeve and not short sleeve. But I think it's a really good jumping off point and I'm going to trace this in the size 40, which is generally the size that works for me. And yeah, and then we'll see where we are. Okay, scratch that. I just realized that that um, pattern starts at a size 50 and I'm a size 40. So of course I could grade the pattern. I haven't learned that yet, so that would be a new skill, but it's Sunday afternoon. I'm not really in a new skill kind of mood. So what I did was I went on Pinterest and I looked for free pattern ruffle tops. Actually, did I look for free? I don't remember, but anyway, I came up with the Peppermint Magazine free ruffle top and I'll put in a picture. So I started printing that off. And what that has is it has the V-neck and it has the sleeves. And I'm gonna use the, the pattern pieces from the other one to use just to figure out where the ruffles go, the shape of the ruffles, etc. But I think that having the shirt pattern in the right size is probably the better way to go. Good morning, I am back. So I did print and cut the in the fold ruffle sleeve top which has the right neckline and the right shape. Um, now the only thing I have to figure out is there's a full facing on this, well not a full facing, but like neck and, and armhole facing. So I guess that is a facing <laughs> as opposed to a lining. And I have to figure out how that's gonna work with the ruffle. If I should, I guess I cut both pieces and then insert the ruffle between both pieces. I'm not sure, I haven't done that before. Or I could decide not to face it and just do bias binding, um, just do bias binding on the neckline. Or adjust the facing so that it just doesn't go out as far and it's just the neckline because I don't really need to face the armhole because the armhole has a sleeve. So yeah, so I'm gonna read through the instructions and figure out what to do and then I'm gonna start cutting. Okay, so I'm marking where I want the ruffle on the peplum top. Now clearly I want it inside the dart because I don't want it to interfere with the dart. I initially had it coming a little further in, but when I looked at it on here, I realized that the these come down pretty much on the outside of the bust. So I, me I measured my bust and it works out to being, if I split it in half, six inches to the outside of the bust, which is actually the second line that I drew was exactly at six inches. And then this is approximately where I'm gonna want them to end, although I will continue the line all the way down. I was gonna try and remove the dart, but it just threw out too many possibilities with the arm sigh and yes I should be able to do it but I don't really know how to do that yet and I just figured you know what I'll leave it in so this this line is wrong <laughs> um, this is the line that I will cut and then I will add seam allowance on each side I have also decided to omit the facing I'm just going to finish this with a bias binding because I've noticed this has just the bias binding. So I think I'm just gonna stick with that. Okay, and now I've done the same on the back. So I've lined up the front next to the back so I can mark evenly the line across where I'm gonna want it to end. I'm not quite sure why these two lines don't match up because the hem matches. I guess it's something about the dart, I don't know. Anyway, this is approximately where I want the darts, the ruffle to end. It doesn't need to be exact, I don't think. And then I've got, based on the photograph, which it feels like the ruffle goes quite far towards the shoulder point. So I've got it about three and a half centimeters in, and then I've got it coming down. It's hard because of the tape, unfortunately, but um, I'll cut it. So fingers crossed. All right, all the pieces, and now I just have to cut the ruffles. Okay, so pieces cut. I looked at a great tutorial online to do ruffles, and I'm gonna link it below in case you have scads of fabric and you want it to be very ruffly. You're basically creating a, a snail shape that then opens up and creates those ruffles. I don't have enough fabric 
to do that. Now I do think from the picture that the ruffle is single ply and just finished with kind of a lettuce edge or surged edge. So I don't think I need to double it, that's good. So I pulled out the pattern pieces for the Patrones and you can see these. the shape here is the shape that they use for the ruffle. It's very long because that's doubled. Um, also a lot of fabric. <laughs> I have, I have kind of little bits, more than little bits. I mean, I've got about a quarter of a yard left. Maybe, maybe a little more than that. I didn't measure it, but it's just not like scads of fabric. So I'm just going to have to figure out how the best way to cut the ruffle. I think it doesn't have to be as long as the one of Patrones because that one goes right to the waist and this one only goes kind of mid rib cage I think so I'm gonna do a little math and I'm gonna try and draft something similar to that pattern piece okie dokie after much hemming and hawing and going back and forth on how to do the ruffle I have created this template and I'm gonna link you up to the person who um, has a great video on how to do this template but the short version is the full length of this long side is, ha is no, I can't even explain it. Um, all I can tell you is from here until the end is how wide I want the ruffle to be. And then, no, I really can't explain it. Moving on. <laughs> okay, so I went through the whole process and I have one, um, one ruffle. Now, one thing I did not realize when I started this is this method creates an appalling amount of waste. Like the amount of fabric I went through for this one little thing, I should have thought ahead. Anyway, take it from me. This method works, but do it like on, maybe do it on tissue paper first so that you have more than just my one template. Cause even my one template, which I already thought was gonna save me some waste, I still ended up with quite a lot of waste and had to like cut half of this away just to get this shape. So. What I'm trying to do now is use this as my template, but I don't have enough fabric to fold over to get this going the exact same way. I could do it if it was going this way, but then I'd have two and they would be matching. So next case, next best case scenario is I'm going to cut two of these and one of them will be seamed at the top. Not ideal, but c'est la vie. Okay, so here we go. I've got the one. I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to rotate it and do another one that way with a little bit of seam allowance here. Okie dokie. So here is my finished ruffle and I finished the edge just with like a serge type stitch. I do need to trim it up a little bit, but it does appear that that's what they've done on the original. Um, I'm really happy to have these. I realized that the very last thing that I need to cut are the little cuffs for the, um, the sleeves. And when I cut the sleeves, I did lengthen them by about yay big. What's that? Inch and a half, five centimeters. Um, so I'm going to stop there for today, at least for recording. And I'm going to get this up because I haven't talked to you guys in a while. And I thought you might appreciate getting a chapter one. Um, I'm also going to do yoga tonight because I haven't worked out since the quarantine started and uh, none of these clothes are going to fit if I don't start working out. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to have some dinner and then I probably will work on this a little bit, but I'm going to get this video up for you guys to see and hopefully I will have the finished product to show you in the next day or so. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.